But you know, and then I can say, well, have you, you know, you, you like this? Do you know where that, where you sampled this background music from, or do you know where this came from? And then I'll give them another track to listen to. And so every now and then you'll get to see them sort of open their minds a little bit. So that's why I say I think it's the responsibility of everyone who knows. So that, that doesn't necessarily just mean parents. That means you know older siblings. That means you know classmates. Anybody who knows. I think it's there. It's a shared responsibility. Okay. I want to just add to it a little bit. I think what uh, Dr. Delempty has said, and I've never called it that in my life, um, but, it's, but, it's, but I do know, I've, I've known uh, Yaka for a while, and I just want to uh, resonate with what she's saying because I think she knows very well being in tune. I just wanted to say something very short because what she was saying uh, impacted me in a way that I, it, it brought this to, to, the mind, to my mind is that the music, the danger of the music, and especially the danger of the music in, form, in the form of hip hop, is not so much the built in or intrinsic capitalist part of it that says buy everything, uh, you know, dance all night or whatever. The more long lasting effect of the damages that hip hop is about, and can we reverse that and is that you were saying and what job is the parent and something that even parents can't control is what happens to the, is the psychological effects of it. Even more than, you know, what we want to get out of it or uh, how, how it, it this aims the direction of our journey in life, you know, uh, you know, and, and so, and, and particularly, I got to say, and just quickly get out of it because I know we got a, a, a great panel, is that I think about um, young women, and I think of young women um, more than anything because of like the super sexualized nature of hip hop, even more because I mean we can talk about you know the machismo of habit stuff, but the thing that that you know one of the major tenets you know what it boils down to I mean you know Jay Z said money cash hoes, but you got the money and the cash, but then the things the, the assault comes on the women totally. You know you got money cash and then it's hoes. You know what I mean? And it's all out. You know um, and you know young women I talk to to are, are prostituted from a young age. We are taught prostitution before we're even able to understand what sexuality is. You know more about what prostitution is, and uh, and and really from a very young age, my, my daughters buy dolls that uh, you know resemble nothing like their image and their own uh, image. If they try to actualize their real images in the world anywhere that even where hip hop is related to it, and hip hop is related to the doll as well as the music and the program, the assault happens where they're not able to match that up and from an early age then you got a problem. And so I think that's a, a really one of the major problems in the music, you know. It's very, I wanted to add on because um, like the great doctor just said, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> one thing about it is, yeah, she, she brought up the MC Light thing. And that really, what them just said, it brought that to my mind too. Like, the, the women are, it's, it's torture for the women. And so, when you look at MC Light, like, think about MC Light. Like, the things that she was bringing to the rapper, like, she was maybe, possibly, top five rappers at that time. Like, woman, man, whatever. She was probably top five. Like, so her level of skills in terms of, you know, that being great for a, a woman role model, it was impeccable. Now I'm talking about what she was actually talking about. You know what I mean? I was paper thin. What you say is just paper thin. And one end right out the other. You know, her ability to not only tap into what was currently going on, but to be socially engaging, to offer another resolve to women who didn't even know women could get down that night. We didn't even know. We was like, damn. <laughs> I'm sorry, we was all in it. We like, Milk, Milk wrote those rhymes. My brother named was Milk, who was a big rapper too. He's like, oh, he wrote those rhymes, but she was nicer than him. So it was like, well, I'm not. <laughs> so if you take that and you compare that to, say, Nicki Minaj, and I just throw her name, I'm not to throw the ball on Nicki because I brought her name up early, you know, but just to roll over her face a couple of <laughs> if you think about Nicki Minaj and not, if you think about her music, right? Think about which I still question if she writes herself. I still think it sounds just like the stuff Drake and um, the other boys write in terms of linguistically. Um, but you look at her image, you look at what she portrays, everything about her is, is actually fake. Like, I mean, everything is it's unfortunate, but it is. She's paid for everything about herself. 
And so she right now is the vocal point of hip hop females. Right now, she's supposedly the nicest that the game offers. She's, she's sold the most records and she's made the most bread. Her influence is the largest. I was just with this beautiful sister the other day, and we get into her car, and she's pumping Nicki Minaj. And I'm like, yo, what is going on with this Nicki Minaj stuff? And she's like, she, she, she don't look like Nicki Minaj, but she's into it. And why? It's because the commercial aspect of the music we was talking about before, who really owns the music, how it's really become manipulated, and how the kids is getting exposed to Nicki Minaj with no titties, with no bra on. I mean, come on, how is that even, how are we even doing that? It's, you know what I mean? So we we have to take, like 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 the Yacht said, we have to all be held accountable at this point. You know what I'm saying? If you know it's on you to actively make a change and an effective impact, especially for the sake of the young women. Especially for the, because the music ain't going away. And I hate to even tell you, it make it even worse because the finances that's attached to hip hop has disastrously shifted in the last five years based on technology that's driven, that's driven and it's gonna to continue to be impactful things that happen to the music. So as the money loses its weight, its value, new forms of manipulation come on. We gotta embrace this as viable members of our society. Your kids are gonna love hip hop, why? Because everybody who got swag is involved in it. Like, you know, like that. So embrace it, but you gotta actively control what's going on, what's being heard, what's, you know what I mean? So. And, and I'll just say, I mean, I, and, we, and the research also supports the idea of, you know, girls are having sex at a lot younger of age. Um, girls are much more willing to engage in oral sex now than they did before. Um, and, and they're also much more likely to engage in sex without relationships now than they were before. So again, when we see, this, these are the images that we're seeing, these are, these are the, the words that we are hearing. We think about self-esteem and who we are and how we define ourselves. And Doctor, let me ask you a question. And this is crazy, but I'm in the middle of this. I'm hearing you talking. I got to ask you a question. Put yourself in the side of the mic. I don't want to put. I don't want to put. I don't want to put. You are. I don't want to put. Look, I don't want to put Nicki Minaj under the bus anymore. But let me ask you a question. Put, yeah. put in a, get yeah. yourself in the mind yeah. of Nicki Minaj and think to yourself: a person who is trying to aspire to have their music heard, and they have artists around them. She signed to a record label where the most probably one of the most popular songs that they put out was "I Want to Have Sex with Every Girl in the World." This was one of the most popular songs that that that, hat that they produced, and yet she's the one female member of the group who has to hold her mentality together to go in there amongst those men, even though she knows it's repulsive that they want to have sex with every woman in the world, and this is what the song is about. And she has to say, yes, I'm down with this team, and I'm a woman. And t tell me about the psyche. What is the psyche? What does that do to the psyche of young women? And her, but she's a mental warrior. And, you know what I'm saying? And I, and it's, I mean, really try not to. I try not to call, you know, separate people out. I try not to. But you know, the the role of an adolescent is is to figure out who you are. I mean, that's the development of an adolescent. You know, role confusion, identity versus role confusion. So when this is the image that I'm seeing, and I'm watching someone else who's up there who's saying, I'm okay with this, right. and women. As a woman, I'm okay with this. Then girls are seeing that and saying, "Oh, I guess it's okay to be okay with that." And if I'm okay with that, then maybe I can get to that point. Um, so it is. It's, it's extremely confusing. I, I work with. Um, I've got a handful of 15 year olds who are pregnant, um, and with, without and with, you know, I mean, and I know that happens all the time, sure, but the their ability at this point now to take responsibility and accountability, um, it's its so different than it would have been, even even five years ago. So, and we know that the media has a big role to play in that. Not just me, not just hip hop, but, I mean, media as a whole, but I mean, hip hop plays a big role in it as well. And that's happening because hip hop now is cross, it's, it's, you know, it's cross cultural. So, now it's not just girls of color, but girls of color are, I think, are, are disproportionately affected. So, so I'm hearing what you're saying then. So if the media is really responsible for this, right, and 
airwaves. How many people listen to hip hop radio, commercial radio, whether it's in New York, Hot 97, Power 105? Okay. Now, if that's if that's where they're if people, regardless of age, if that's where they're getting, if that's where they're hearing the music, then that's why I asked the question: What are the chances of really turning this around? Because you have artists like the ones here on this panel. And it's very difficult for them to get exposure on, on, on commercial radio. So how do you actually turn this around? I mean, the trend is very clear where this is going. As you said, as everyone said, it's getting worse. I think you got to ask the question, is, you said if the, if the media is responsible, but i got to ask the question, is media yeah. responsible? Is the media I responsible? Ask, like, I would ask these guys, like, how, when you see kids, like, how do you reach them? Because obviously you do. Yeah. We have to be responsible. <clears throat> we have to be responsible. Like you said, the, this, this artist, Will Bill, we, have, we can't want him to be played on Hot 97. We have to not accept the standard and the format of Hot 97. We have to say, this is disproportionate to the voices in our community. Hey, 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 there's people out here who are talking about stuff. You want to have a radio station, it should play stuff that the people are talking about all across the board. Yeah, we can dance, we can talk about sex, we can talk about that. We also want to talk about a lot of this stuff too. That's what it should be about. So instead of us saying to Hot 97, please, please, please change, we got 